Hi, everybody. Hello. How are you? I uh, hope you're well this morning. Um, so, yeah, I'm trying out a new, a new format, uh, videos, and um, uh, streaming across a load of different platforms. Uh, uh, anything that I can do, I'm just thinking, what can I do to help more uh, adoptees thrive? And I was talking to uh, Susanna McFarlane, who's going to be on the Thriving Adoptees podcast yesterday morning. She's from Australia. So usually my uh, afternoons are busier than my mornings because a lot of the guests are from the from the states and the, and the us as well as from here in the uk so yeah i did a recording uh, well, I, did, I had a conversation with Susanna yesterday morning um at uh, nine hour time so um bit different uh, earlier start for for me than than usual and uh Susanna mentioned this word um uh, this phrase you know this the name of this book by the, the guy Bessel van der Kolk, I think it's called uh, the body. The body keeps the score. And whenever I hear the body keeps the score, um, I think of football. And I, I don't know why that why that is because I'm not particularly. Obviously, it's World Cup at the moment, um, but I'm not a particularly a big football fan. Um, but yeah, the body keeps the score. Um, I think of football, and I shared this with them, and we've both had a little bit of laugh. You know, there's. There's, there's so much relief in there in laughter, you know, um, when Ed, uh, uh, Michael, um, Michael McIntyre, one of my favourite uh, comics, when he, he, he sets up the joke and then he delivers the punchline and there's a relief, you know, there's a, there's a relief. The laughter is a, 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 a relief and, and we, we get it. We get, we get the joke um, as opposed to being told a joke and thinking it's and thinking it's funny right we haven't really got the joke we haven't felt the joke we haven't uh, got it in our bodies so two reactions to a joke we are there um we are there laughing relief uh, the relief that the punchline gives us um gives us understanding of where the guy was going to a, a long time where the girl was going to a long time or the oh that was funny and and what's that so what's that got to do with anything about thriving adoptees well it it's to do i think it, for me it's to do with whether we get an insight or not so you know we hear something um like uh, you know you're okay don't you you know um we uh, you know you uh, we we love you just as as you are and superficially that that kind of like yeah it goes into the brain but we don't get it in the gut we don't have a felt understanding we don't feel it like we um, like uh, like this this joke thing, right? Um, we we feel a joke because we feel the relief in our body, and we and we laugh. Two le different levels there, like a superficial understanding, a theory in a head, or an embodied experience. I you laugh, and it's the same with an insight, right? Um, so um, the body keeps the score. The body keeps the score. And what's that got to do with football? And 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 what about this title, um, Trauma uh, Trauma FC One, Adoptees United Three, and um, that was the idea that came up to me as I was swimming yesterday lunchtime. I was thinking about football, and I was thinking of a, 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 the, you know the next metaphor that came to to mind. And uh, so, yeah, hopefully that that makes you makes you laugh because if we can laugh at our trauma <laughs> who laughs at the trauma right wouldn't it be great if we could just say oh there it goes again same old stupid voice in my head um telling me that i'm not good enough what if we could just laugh at it what if instead of you know it could be an opinion that we no longer um value um that's what a, a, a great mentor of mine a guy called uh, uh, richard wilkins talks about yeah uh the, the what if the voice in our head could become an opinion that we no longer value um we realize that it's fiction we realize it's a, a comedy voice and we laugh at the voice rather than taking it seriously because i you know i've spent a lot of my life taking that voice in um, that, that my head seriously and believing it right believing it so but how can we? Because, you know, the body keeps the score, you know, the body, you know, think of the word score, um, obviously football score in this in this case, um, or, you know, the body's got, there's, there's a score to be settled. And there's a, there's a, there's some, there's an air of menace around that, you know, like somebody's got a score, 
um, <clears throat> and they've got a score against us and they're going to come and revisit us and we should be afraid. And I was listening to a podcast this morning with a guy called Johnny Wilkinson, who used to be the rugby um, as a rugby captain of um, and a, a, the English team. Um, and now he's really into consciousness and he, he listens to a lot of uh, people that I listen to. I, I love listening to. Uh, and he said, well, you know, the cells of the bodies, the, sorry, the cells of our bodies renew. And I've heard that before. I've heard that before. So, you know, every year, all the time, the cells in our body are, are renewing. So although our body keeps the score, that, that body is in a constant um, a constant uh, uh, sequence, a constant process of renewing. So maybe the body can forget, right? So the body keeps the score, but the body's changed because the cells have changed. And, 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 and the, so the, the, the score that has been kept by the body has gone. Maybe the, maybe the, um, uh, the score is still kept alive by the beliefs in our heads. Maybe that's where it's gone. Maybe that feeling in our body has become a belief in our head, right? So when, when, when I, I, I was adopted at four weeks old, so, you know, like it's pre, obviously it's what people call pre-verbal pre-verbal so i haven't got any thoughts i, I can't i can't express my a, a thought such as um why did my birth look why did my birth mother a birth mother not keep uh, love me enough to keep me i couldn't express that as a thought because i had no words instead i had a, a feeling and maybe that feeling was buried deep down and it and it popped back up again 40 years later you know, when I found out about this teddy bear and, and this kind of brought the, that made the, that made the subconscious conscious. So the body keeps the score, but the, it's, it's our beliefs, I, I believe, uh, that are, are, are running our, our, our lives now. And yeah, um, uh, that, but how can we see that? For ourselves, because we have to see stuff for ourselves, uh, an insight that we don't see. This, this is one of my favorite phrases. I came up with this a couple of years ago. I was talking to a, a friend of mine, a friend of my wife, and a friend of mine, yeah, um, uh, Alex, shout out to Alex, AJ, uh, Alexander Johnson, um, saying, you know, like there's no such thing as a second hand epiphany. There's no such thing as a second hand insight. There's no such thing as hand me down. Um, insights hand me down aha moments right so our beliefs our beliefs can be handed down because we suck in um what that we suck in the beliefs from the world around us we suck in what people say from us from the world around us so that's second hand but there's no such thing as a second hand insight we have to see stuff for ourselves I still don't know whether this live stream is working or anything. Anyway, it's going to become a it's going to become a podcast as well. Um, so yeah, the body keeps the score. Um, Trauma FC one, adoptees United three. So by coming together, by being adoptees united, we can share our insights we can share what we've learned about trauma. We've shared, we can share the fact that we are not our trauma. You know, that separation, that separation from our trauma, seeing that, the, that I am not my trauma, the trauma is not me, not at an intellectual level, like a theory in our head, but like deep body in our bones. That's what's, that's what's really worked for me. And, you know, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a shrink, I'm not a counselor, I'm not a therapist, I'm just a guy sharing what he's learned and the first headline I, the first title i came up for the for this podcast was actually trauma fc one simon ben two because i thought this is about what i've learned and uh, and then i thought isn't that isn't that selfish and you know people talk about trauma happening in relationships so healing happens in relationships too i thought that's so true isn't it so isn't this isn't just this isn't this isn't just about me this 
it's kind of like it was about me at some point, but it's no longer about me. I just love the conversations that I have with the, uh, the, the, the guests on the, on the podcast and learning what they've learned, learning how they have realized that they are bigger than their trauma. And my favorite example of this at the moment is um, a uh, it's from a, a book that's got nothing to do with about nothing to do with adoption, but it's from a guy who became an adrenaline junkie. So he he he, he nearly got killed. Um, he was in uh, Bosnia uh, as a like a, he calls himself a, a, a war terrorist. Like he he went to Bosnia to see what was going on, and he ended up in a bar and. Some guy, local militia guy, put a gun in his um, in his mouth, and he he uh, in in his seeing that his world was over, he he laughed, and the warlord thought that that was a sign of this guy's strength and courage, and he he just thought this this guy's you know incredible, and he so he didn't. Didn't, he laughed too and took the gun out of his out of his mouth and didn't kill him. And this guy got he he, he had a such a rush of a, a, adrenaline and different um, uh, different uh, um, drugs running through his brain and his body um, in that near death experience that he became addicted to this sort of um, hijinks. A bit like you know like mountain climbers, they're addicted to being in the, the, the uh, in in the moment in in the zone. And, and really pushing themselves uh, and, and, and focused in on, on that moment and survival. And so he became addicted on this. And, and then he, so a bit later on, he decided to see what it was like to, to try heroin for two weeks and see what it was like coming off it. Five years later, he came off it. Yeah, a two year, a two week experiment became a five year struggle with drugs. And he became off, he came off it when he saw that he was bigger than his addiction. It's a seven hour audio book and the genius is in that one sentence. He saw he was bigger than his addiction. He had an epiphany moment. He saw he's bigger than his addiction. And that was the start of him coming up. He came off on that. And for me, the parallels with um, adoption are, are strong. When we realize that we are bigger than our trauma, then that trauma is something that happened to us. Um, not who we are. It's something that we experience, but it's not who we are. And um, I'm going to leave you w with that. So, Trauma FC 1, Adoptees United 3. Let's come together. If you want to be, if you haven't been on our podcast, you're an adoptee, get in touch, Simon at thrivingadoptees.com. And I'd love to explore what you've learned. And what you continue to learn about um, overcoming trauma. Um, and uh, thank you very much. Signing off. Uh, I don't know how to stop the thing now. Um, oh, yeah, stop video. See you soon. And um, yeah, uh, I'm not going to edit this before I put it on the audio. So sorry for the video, you know, the, I don't know because I don't know how to do that. Um, uh, so uh, if you're listening on, on audio and listening to the podcast, hello to you too. Thanks a lot. See you soon. Bye-bye.